Hey there, I'm Collective View, welcome back to my channel. So today we have a very special video. It's my birthday weekend, and we are going to Santa Cruz, California, driving over there um, for a fun day. And a highlight is going to be going on a steam train through the Redwood Forest. So that's gonna be super fun. We're bringing Luna along, my dog. So that'll be extra special. And I've also picked three manga off my shelves here. So three of them that I'm gonna be reading for the journey along the way is um, Zelda Twilight Princess, um, manga volume one and then I'm going to be also reading Dragon Ball that time I got reincarnated as Yamcha and then the third one is going to be I'm the villainous so I'm taming the final boss volume one is that yeah let's go All right, so in this vlog, we're gonna be reading some manga and talking about it, don't worry, no spoilers. And we're also gonna be having some adventures. So first things first, we got some breakfast from Carl's Jr. in the morning, and Lou definitely wanted some. <laughs> and then we picked up some Subways, so that way we can have it for lunch later on in the day. And then we were off. So first one up is Zelda Twilight Princess, and this one really surprised me. It's been a long, long time since I played Twilight Princess um, on the Wii. It was when it first came out and I had gotten the collector's edition with that gold Wii controller that I still have somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I don't really remember a lot of the plot from the game itself, so I thought that this one would be a really fun read. That way I can get back into the story and remember <laughs> what happened in the game. Um, but yeah, the art is gorgeous in this. That, that's the first thing that surprised me. Um, and it, yeah, it's just really pretty throughout. There's a lot of deep black art um, and the style is just, it's perfect. Um, the second thing that I really loved was Link himself. He is such a character in this. He has personality, which was so refreshing and no one, in at least a lot of the general video games for um, Zelda, he's kind of just a blank slate. Um, you know, doesn't have much in the way of personality usually, but in here in the manga, he is a sassy guy. <laughs> he has a sense of humor um, and he has, yeah, just a lot of personality going on and a lot of expressions that are really super fun. Um, and everyone in the village loves him. And yeah, he just has, a lot of relationships which is cool to see um, in the village and yeah they did really great in character building and then pacing it you know it, this first volume just it worked perfectly so I had a great time reading it um, you definitely see a lot of elements which is cool for a link um, that are reflected in like the um, general um, I don't know, mythos is that the word <laughs> um, but you know they show link in here with um, him using left-handed sword. Um, I know in some of the more recent games they kind of switch it to right-handed, but in this uh, manga here he is left-handed sword, sword wielder. Um, and then they have they show his house, him living in the tree. Um, so like it just brought back a lot of good memories. This reading, just seeing a lot of elements that I knew nostalgia-wise <laughs> from the early video games. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, I just had a great time on this one, so this one's a definite recommend. Um, and I don't know if this is really a spoiler, but it's on the cover anyway, but you know, it shows the mechanic of him changing into his wolf form, so that's really fun. Um, and yeah, just a lot of great elements. Like I said, pacing was perfect, and it just really rolled along real fast. I was like turning the pages really quickly, which is always a great sign. So yeah, definitely recommend this one um, if you're a Zelda fan. And if you played Twilight Princess long ago like I did, this is definitely, it'll bring back great memories and great feelings. So yeah, awesome read on this one. <laughs> A while 
later, we were getting close. So the Redwoods steam train that I was talking about earlier, it's called Roaring Camp. And here we are, finally made it. We don't look good. <laughs> We made it. So I chose this activity to do for my birthday just because I was looking for something that would allow dogs to be brought on or brought in the area. And so um, Roaring Camp Railroads allows dogs as long as they're you know, calm and cool and on leash. And so that was a great experience and opportunity to bring Luna along to celebrate my birthday. So here we are, along with my parents with me. So on the train, they explained to us that there were some pieces of the track that had um, been destroyed by fires in the area. So this is one of the examples along the way, unfortunately. Um, it's really interesting to see, but sad in the same way. Um, here's another um, track that would have gone higher up. Um, yeah, it's really interesting to see like what was once and what is no longer. So your firemen rest on the left hand side. They're sitting about four to five feet backwards. in the fire that's raging at 2,750 degrees to pull the water in the boiler. The boiler they were itself saying that is it takes four or five attempts degrees. usually to get up this. So let's see how it goes. Inside this small cramped wood metal cabinet steam engine. To a nice comfortable 120 to 160 degrees all day long. So keep that in mind as we're going up the steepest pair of narrow gauge train tracks in this entire time. I think we have to. Yep. Oh, we're going like back. Your engine is literally baking for your entertainment. Probably four times. Uh, but don't worry. I don't know. We wouldn't be here if we didn't know. But now you know why I'm a conductor. Oh, I see. We came from that way. No. So yeah, we came from down there, and now we backed up. Yeah. So we came from down there, and now we're backing up. Oh, that's thing, cool. yeah. yeah. Going backwards. <laughs> Look, we were, I saw that, the little red, little red thing down there. So we came from down there. people a nice happy wave if you roll by them. I think we left that. Isn't that where we came on? Oh, now we're going up. Yeah, now we keep going. Oh, so it looks like we came from Sasquatch, and now we're continuing up the mountain again. You may spot yourself a Sasquatch, too. Yep, Bigfoot, he's out here. 
to be watching us right now. So don't litter. Trash squad pays litter by. Please use the trash cans at all stops. The Sasquatch will fight Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Please use the number one, number two, ah, and number three. What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. Halfway through the hour and a half round trip, they had a stop and we took like a, about a five minute break and they said we could walk over to the Cathedral Grove, which is what I'm saying <laughs> right here in this clip, um, that they are giving us a five minute break and that the total car had, the uh, sorry, the total train had six cars, there's Lou, <laughs> and um, usually the train takes five, but since there was a six car added, there is a little engine in the back as well. And we were told to just follow the train tracks if you wanted to walk down, like less than a minute down these tracks to see the Cathedral Grove. But yeah, the experience was like absolutely beautiful. The weather um, was a little bit misty and just a little rainy, but otherwise um, it was great. The, they had tarps on the top of the train cars. So I guess in better weather, you'd be able to see more of the trees, but hey, we, we took what we got and it was a great experience. Um, it was absolutely wonderful, very peaceful and serene. Um, the conductor and staff along the way were narrating and giving you know, facts and history about the area and the railroad there. So yeah, it was just a, a really fun time all around. So after the train ride, we just took a little bit of time to walk around the roaring camp, as they call it. Um, there was a gift shop, um, which you see here, and they also had the picnic area, um, a area to buy food, and then there was also the museum that you could go into and walk around at. Um, but it, it felt like the general sense was like this area catered more to families with kids or school groups and all that. Um, but it was yeah, still a really fun time. Um, they also had a holiday event going on. And right here in that building to the right, they had what they call a ho holiday tree walk. Um, and they gave free apple cider inside. Really hot, nice apple cider, which is really, really cool. Um, and there was Santa inside there, so that was fun. And then lastly, as we're walking back out to the parking lot, uh, one of the trains is passing by. It's so cute to see all the little kids excited. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a really cool experience. I'm really glad that we went. And now we're off. 
off heading to our next destination and I have the manga. I'm the villainess, so I'm taming the final boss. And this next one here was a really fun read. I was surprised um, usually with the like a Tome route games where you have someone who's trying to survive the game or trying to get out of a circumstance um, and just trying to get a safe ending, quote unquote, um, versus the bad ending. Um, usually they're not so funny or they're just cute. Um, but this one had a lot of humor in it, which I really appreciated. Um, her, the, the main protagonist, um, she was actually really cool. <laughs> I really enjoyed her character. Um, she is the type that I'm a fan of. So that's the feisty, clever um, heroine who takes matters into her own hand. Is not just going to sit around crying. Um, she knows that she can't, you know, quote, win the game. Um, so she's going to at least make sure she doesn't get the bad ending <laughs> and she's going to, you know, fight and not die. <laughs> and so, um, the prince here has decided to go with the actual protagonist of the game. Um, and that leaves our heroine to be the villainess. Um, she kind of realizes that she had a past life. And that she's now kind of playing a game. She remembers routes and how they might end. So she's trying to avoid those circumstances. Uh, getting the bad routes. Um, she knows she can't, like I said, win the prince. He wants to go with the actual protagonist. Not knowing that it's a game. And so she's decided that she is going to, like I said, take matters into her own hands. And she is going to find the next best alternative so she survives um, she has she has some memories from her prior life so she realizes that she had a past life and that she's either reincarnated um, or something of that sort and so she is leaving um, the, the castle and that brings us to her next plan which is to find the demon king um, he is like a secret, um, hidden love interest that you can't usually get that route unlocked until you've played it fully one time. And so she is aware of that and she's going to be finding that demon prince for herself, uh, actually demon king, <laughs> demon king for herself. And she's going to have, she's going to propose and have him marry her so that way she can secure her safety. Um, but of course, nothing is ever that easy and um, she's going to have to keep trying. <laughs> and It's super cute because you get um, some perspective from his um, from his side of the story, which is nice. Usually you might just get the heroine's perspective only, um, but you get to see his thoughts and feelings, um, his little side talks with his advisors <laughs> he has two of them and so you'll you get to see his point of view which is really nice it's refreshing um he of course is this brooding at least to appearances brooding beautiful gorgeous guy um and you know she says she remembers him from the game and she makes a joke where he's like oh this guy's even better than in the 2d version <laughs> Like, I think she said she calls him disgustingly handsome or disgustingly gorgeous because she's like, you know, taking him back when it's not just a game to her anymore. Um, so it's just, it's super, it's it's super cute. I love that there's some vivacity to her and she, she has a weapon. She knows how to use it. Um, she's, she, you know, she can take care of herself and she has a plan. So I, I love that concept. I love when someone... So matters into their own hands. I love it. Um, so yeah, so that's her. Um, these are her two advisors and she is going to try any means possible. She even, you know, tries to threaten the demon prince. She just has all these plans um, and, you know, they might not work out, but she has plans and I love that. I love that she's not going to give up. And then we arrived at our next destination. I was really excited about this one. It is the Santa Cruz Public Library. And you might be wondering what is so special about a library? But what was so special is that I actually had registered a for a library card to pick up. 
And this recent interest in getting more library cards um, came about because of this um, app called Libby that I learned about recently. So maybe it'll help you too. This is in no way sponsored or anything. Um, I just really love the app. And I've found so much more access to manga and um, fiction novels um, with this app. It's, it's amazing. So if you have your public library card for your county, um, check to see if you can access the Libby app. It's spelled L-I-B-B-Y. Um, and if not, um, like for California, for instance, um, there's a few um, county libraries in the state. Um, they're like San Jose Public Library, Santa Cruz Public Library, and, and some others um, that you can, as a state resident, get the card. Um, you may have to get go there in person to actually pick it up, but you can still register online. And they also have options for e-cards for other libraries. Um, there's even some um, United State-wide cards that you can get. Like, for instance, you can get one in Florida as a United States resident and one in Texas. So you can bet that I've got access to all these cards. That way I can um, find the library that has the quickest access to whatever I want to rent digitally. It can be sent to your Kindle if you have one. It's just, it's just so cool. So recently I've gotten into the habit of seeing if there's another county in the area that I can get a library card for. Um, yeah, so you will see that's why we are here at Santa Cruz Public Library to pick it up and foreshadowing another destination after this one. And after I got my card, the Santa Cruz Public Library also was having a big book sale, which was so awesome. I found tons of books. They even had a manga graphic novel section. It was pretty small. Um, it was like at the very last hour of their sale, but I did find, here it is, Beastars Volume 1. It was in perfect condition. <laughs> it was like, it felt brand new. And then here's the rest of my pile of books. Um, the paperbacks were a dollar each and the hardcovers were two dollars. That was it. So I got this big stack. Um, but yeah, like, I was so happy. Blue, not so much, not so impressed, but I was absolutely thrilled. <laughs> so happy book sales it was awesome that was great and then we were off to our last destination for the day the san jose public library let me explain <laughs> now here we are at one of the san jose public libraries i had already e-registered for an e-card so i already have it for this library but i just need to pick it up and my mom's gonna pick one up too <laughs> for the library. Yay! We're library buddies. Yeah, thanks to Libby. We did it. Mission accomplished. We got my San Jose Public Library card. <laughs> Look at how cute it is. Now? Look, it has a shark for the San Jose Sharks. <laughs> oh. It's so cute. <laughs> oh, so cute. Anyway, it's been a great day. It may seem a little weird to you, but to me, it makes me <laughs> supremely happy that I have another library card. It's like it adds to the Libby app and get more books. And then we headed home. So the last read of the day is the manga uh, that time I got reincarnated as Yamcha from the Dragon Ball series. Um, this one was my favorite of the day. <laughs> it surprised me so much. I thought it was going to be gimmicky or cheesy, but it was such a fun read, especially if you're a Dragon Ball fan, Dragon Ball Z fan. You're gonna, you're gonna love this. I promise you. <laughs> so the premise is that there is this kid. He is a big time Dragon Ball fan, and he has this unfortunate accident, falls, um, and supposedly dies. Dot dot dot. And he finds himself waking up in Yamcha's body. Um, it, it was such like a fun moment for me. Um, I'm in the middle of rewatching 
the Dragon Ball original Dragon Ball series. And, you know, I've passed these episodes um, here where Yamcha is with Bulma and Oolong and Poir in the desert after wish that, that Oolong made for that the softest panties, right? And so he, this our protagonist, he wakes up in Yamcha's body in this moment where they are in the desert. Um, and Goku wakes up, so surprised that his tail is gone. But this guy, as a super fan, he's like, okay, this is amazing, first of all. Um, and he quotes everything that he knows Yamcha says. He even does the falling motion a little late, but he knows that it needs to be done, so he does it. Um, and it's at this point where like the story gets really interesting because it's the moment where Goku decides to fly off on his Nimbus and go train with Master Roshi. But Yamcha, or our protagonist in Yamcha's body, realizes something. He's like, wait a minute, I know I'm supposed to go with Bulma. I you know, I would love to have her as my girlfriend. This is like the best dream come true. But he realizes, no, I need to survive. I know Yamcha's gonna die because he's not strong enough. He's, you know, just a regular human. So he decides, which is very smart, to go off and train with Goku instead. He's gonna be with Krillin and Master Roshi and Goku training. Um, he knows what's gonna happen, right? And... He's, he knows who's, who, who's they're gonna face, who's coming to meet them um, in the story. And he knows his impending doom is upon him. But if he's gonna live in this new life, this new body, he needs to be much, 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 much stronger. <laughs> and so you just see the events of the Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z story unfold. Um, which are amazing when I saw Vegeta and <laughs> it just brings back so many good memories of the series. Um, but yeah, Yamcha, he knows, he knows what he's got to do. You see him really take his Dragon Ball knowledge to heart. Um, this guy is super smart. Like <laughs> if any other fan ever were to experience this, like learn from Yamcha because he <laughs> learn from this guy in Yamcha's body because he really played the story to its advantage to survive. So it was just a really awesome read. It's such fun. The night ends with Mountain Mike's Pizza, the mountain box. <laughs> yummy, yummy. Oh, and then we got a dessert, my birthday reward. <laughs> All right, anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>